All right, uh, so the title for today is uh, Aesthetics. It's a, it's a huge subject, very important, uh, and I'm uh, hoping that some of my experiences will help to deepen your own understanding of it. Um, I, I guess I, have to, I should start out by saying aesthetics was, uh, was the first of, of what uh, C.S. Peirce about 100 years ago called the normative sciences. The three normative sciences were aesthetics, ethics, and logic, where aesthetics talks about the things that are admirable and ethics talks about things that are right, right or wrong, and logic talks about the uh, formal representation of truth. Um, now, um, it, it's kind of interesting to look at the history of the word aesthetics uh, uh, because uh, up until about uh, 250 years ago, it was used uh, um, in a very general sense where it referred to anything that had to do with your emotions or your feelings, uh, the senses. And it's only, it's only uh, uh, you know, in the 18th century and later that it became associated with, the, uh, with notions of beauty and fine art exclusively. Uh, it, it, it's, in fact, it's very similar to the word art itself, um, where art used to mean anything that was, that was uh, not in nature, anything that was made by people. Um, at, you know, like the word artificial uh, comes from art in its old sense, and, and, and only, uh, uh, only later uh, became used primarily in the sense of fine art. So, so aesthetics uh, is, uh, went through a similar evolution in its meaning. Um, uh, now, uh, I, I have to say that somehow this idea of art and aesthetics and beauty is somehow underlying all of the, uh, all of the scientific work, the way I like to, to do things. Whatever I do, I try to, I, I try to, uh, uh, to do it uh, in a way that, I, that, that has some elegance to it, some, uh, uh, s something that's... Uh, uh, that that I think is, is is beautiful, not just to get get a job done, but but uh, uh, but to do it in a way that 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 that's, pleases me in you know in in, in uh, as many senses as possible. Uh, so that so I'm really happy that uh, that Stanford allowed me to choose my own title as I'm as I'm retired at Stanford. As and my 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 title now is, is uh, professor emeritus of the art of computer programming. And, uh, and that's, but you know, that art, I, I chose that very, very carefully uh, 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 in the sense of, uh, of, of something, making something of beauty. Um, 25 years ago, I gave a lecture about computer sciences and art, and I tried to explain in there how, um, how uh, uh, computer programs could be actually uh, written that were that were noble and truly magnificent programs and so on. Um, uh, and uh, uh, somebody came up to me afterward and, and gave me a, a counterexample, he thought, and that is, he said, okay, Don, uh, what, are you, what would happen if you're working for a bank and you had to write a lot of programs in COBOL for this bank and so on. And, and it took me about a half an hour before I could th think of any answer to that one. But, uh, uh, but in general, almost every, you know, but, 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 I, but th there still is way, I think, to find beauty in, in, in um, even that. Uh, now, um, also going back into the 70s, I, I, needed to, uh, uh, I needed to create the system called Tech uh, because of the books that I was writing. And um, I just couldn't be happy uh, writing those books anymore if they wouldn't look good in, in print. And there was this revolution in the printing industry where, where, where the, uh, the, the, the tried and true ways of, of typesetting that were using hot metal type were, uh, were becoming a, like dinosaurs. The, the people who, who knew how to do it were dying out and, uh, and the new machines, uh, uh, unfortunately run by computers, were um, uh, had had lost all the principles of, of spacing, especially when it came to technical books that had to do with mathematics. Uh, uh, people solved the problems for for simple books and for magazines, but they but mathematics got short shrift. So, so I was beginning to despair. How would I? How could I stand to write a book that would that would look atrocious? Um, and uh, and uh, fortunately, at the, I, I happened to notice that. That the new the new technology was something that uh, it was just a small matter of programming in order to uh, uh, in order to 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 get an arbitrary page uh, on these digital machines and so uh, 
And so I, I changed my whole uh, plan for, uh, for what I would be working on and spent the next 10 years working on aesthetics of, of publishing. Uh, conversely, now that I have tech, uh, I'm sure that I'm motivated to write better books than I, w than I would have uh, uh, before. And I also, uh, I, I believe that I, I've got a lot of books now in my library that probably would never have existed uh, without uh, the fact that, that the authors uh, could feel that, after th that they would have a book that they would enjoy having in their hands and, and seeing, and not just for the content, uh, uh, the, the actual semantics of the content. Um, uh, I, I read a story um, uh, while I was working on this. I read a story about Herbert Hoover, um, who uh, uh, in the 1930s uh, um, already, until, and, and then until he died at age 80, uh, I'm not sure exactly when it was, but he would never uh, like to see any of his, any of his writing uh, typewritten. He would always ins insist that somebody would set it in, in, in type and, and, and print it up you know, sort of a galley proof that he could look at it uh, uh, beautifully before he would even proofread it to see what he, and then he would say, oh no, I could cross this out and so on. Um, uh, so, so um, you know, there are, there are other people beside me who, who, who somehow have this idea that, uh, uh, that, that, that when you do something uh, uh, th that, you, that you spend some time on, you also like to have some, uh, some pride in the beauty of it at the end. Um, soon after I came to MIT, um, I learned about the aesthetics and computing project that, that uh, John Maeda is running at the Media Lab. And so I went over there a couple of weeks ago and I talked to, um, uh, uh, to a lot of his students. And, uh, and boy, uh, there's lots of, of fantastic uh, new possibilities for, for uh, engaging your left and right brain simultaneously uh, now that uh, computers are so fast and we have so many uh, uh, cool ways to make graphics and uh, and and uh, the the possibilities now are are you know much greater uh, th than before for having really uh, uh, really beautiful things combining uh, with our technology. Um, I, uh, still, I think that I, I want to emphasize that I don't see that that there's there's, there's a convergence between art and science. Uh, somehow, I, I I really think that that these aesthetic things are are beyond logic. That it's something that you know I I I, I know so, something is beautiful somehow with a different way, completely different way inside me that uh, uh, that I can't explain rationally. Um, uh, it, it's quite different from the way that I know a mathematical theorem is true. That that I have certain kinds of knowledge that come from from senses. Um, and uh, uh, I, I, I don't see that this is going to change, although, of course, uh, uh, I can't prove that it will never happen. Uh, I, uh, I, I certainly uh, I, I recommend that people, that people try to, uh, uh, to understand these, these uh, emotional, uh, uh, unrational things uh, using rational means to a certain point, but uh, uh, I'm not betting that they'll ever succeed. I'm just betting that it'll be an interesting, interesting thing to continue getting better and better approximations. Um, uh, I, I do want to mention what's maybe one of the most, um, uh, what, well, certainly one, one of the earliest uh, major uh, efforts in this direction, uh, because it took place here in Cambridge. Uh, 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 George Burkhoff uh, at Harvard. Uh, published a book in 1933 called Aesthetic Measure. Uh, how many people have ever heard of that book? Is it, yeah, we have a few here. So at the time, uh, a lot of people regarded Burkhoff as uh, probably the, America's number one mathematician. And uh, certainly, uh, he would have to be in the top five by anybody's, uh, by anybody's ranking. Um, but it, anyway, he wrote this book where, where you have, uh, where he has mathematical formulas by which you compute how beautiful something is. And there's page after page where you'll have different symbols, um, uh, you know, a hexagon or, 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 or um, combination of squares in different ways, and, and, and you have the symbol there. Underneath it, a number, 0. 0.789. And, and uh, the higher the number, the more beautiful. Um, and, uh, and similarly, pots, and, uh, uh, you know, vases. Uh, uh, you could, you could, you could, cal you could calculate uh, uh, the aesthetic measure of, 
of a vase, and he also, uh, uh, you know, went into music and and uh, would and and had numbers for this. Well, I have to say, I looked at these, at this book, and um, and my num my numerical ranking wouldn't uh, uh, correlate very well with with that, but but um, uh, it's still, you know, so it's, so you know, I mean, he has a right to. To, to making a big failure, just like I do, you know. I mean, if, if I if I uh, uh, want to try out some ideas, it doesn't. I don't have to succeed at all. But I think he actually thought this was one of his his greatest uh, successes. Maybe I have the sim similar kind of a hang-up. Uh, I, I I looked it up in the in the uh, in the online online catalogs. It, there's copies of his, of this book, Aesthetic Measure, in seven uh, seven Harvard libraries, and uh, and. And and one of them, in fact, at the Widener Library was one copy at Widener Library was actually checked out. So so people are still reading it. Um, uh, there's there's one in MIT's retrospective collection, uh, which is you know uh, remote storage. Um, the book was translated into Spanish, and uh, I found p excerpts published in French and German and several other languages in the library. Um, well, I, so anyway, I think it's kind of flaky uh, to. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I did a similar thing with with tech. I have I have a way to if you try to to break a paragraph into lines and you try to say how how good are the uh, is this particular way of presenting the lines of a paragraph. Uh, I, I have a numerical uh, measurement and and tech actually tries to to find the best uh, the, the the measurement that has the least badness according to this according to this measure. Um, but you know, so I so I did a similar way of having I was trying to measure beauty, but the difference between me and Burkhoff is that I I didn't believe in my measure, <laughs> I, I, you know, you know I I freely admitted it. It was just a crude approximation that would that would just it would, would tend to correlate. But you know, but uh, uh, you know, but 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 I had to have something that I could compute quickly that would that would uh, most of the time be be not so bad. Um, so um, I'm planning an exercise on, uh, for Volume Four of Art of Computer Programming where. Which would be to try to write a piece of music that's optimum by his by his his uh, uh, cr criteria, and we'll see how it sounds. You know. Okay. Well, um, I just happened to see uh, an interview with John Polkinghorne in the current issue of Science and Spirit, where he where he said uh, the mystery of music and the reality of music eludes science. Um, I think uh, uh, you know it's great to learn more about music and art by in these quantitative ways, but it seems to me there's a, there's a huge gap between what will probably ever be achievable by a rational understanding instead of an intuitive emotional understanding of this. Um, uh, you know, even in scientific and mathematical work, um, the elegance of a theorem and these aha insights uh, defy explanation, um, and I don't see why there should be only one way to understand things. Um, uh, but anyway, I'm going to say more about this in later lectures. Uh, and uh, we could debate these points. But today, what I want to do is give concrete examples uh, based on my experiences with the 316 project, uh, uh, because I think this taught me uh, 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 a few lessons about, about things that, uh, about how uh, some beautiful things can really make a difference in the meaning uh, uh, that I associate with, uh, with, with rational thing. Um, so let's t try slide number one. Let me see. I push. This button and does it work? Okay, so um, now I guess we can have the house lights go down. The, um, uh, those of you who heard uh, uh, any of my previous lectures know that I worked on this book uh, called 316, and uh, and uh, it started out with a uh, with us uh, 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 a few of us at the church where I was uh, uh, looking at the, uh, chapter three, verse 16 of every book in the Bible. And um, from the very beginning of this class, since we were focusing on these on these verses, uh, several of the uh, women in the class who who, under, who are good at calligraphy uh, decided that before class they would uh, they would take they would take the verses that we were going to study next and 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 put them in big letters on an, on an ice piece of paper, and we could hold them up in front of us. Uh, as we were uh, you know, shining the light on those verses to to try to figure out uh, uh, what we could uh, about them. Um, now a few years went by, and I start and I was working on on type on typesetting, and I met a lot of people who were uh, who were uh, 
really the best in the world on on beautiful letters, and uh, in, in particular, uh, uh, t uh, my great good fortune that I got got to be friendly with Herman Sopp, who uh, has designed uh, 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 about 20 of the best typefaces that ever were invented, and uh, and not only was he a good designer, but he also was very sympathetic to computers. And so uh, uh, I could invite him to Stanford, and we could work together on, on, on collaborative work. And um, so uh, as, as the years went by, and I got the idea that, that I should write a book about these 316 verses, I, I wrote to Herman first, and I said, Herman, I, uh, I, I've got this idea for a very strange book, uh, and I wonder if you'd be able to help me I, I, I design the cover of it. Um, and I said, I, I would like you to, to do for me the most beautiful three in the history of mankind. Or, you know, the, um, the, the most beautiful three and, and the most beautiful one and the most beautiful six that have ever been seen uh, in, in the history of the world. And also the most beautiful colon to go between them. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, and then I tried to explain to him what the, the idea of, of my book and, uh, and uh, uh, to my... Uh, you know, and, and, and fortunately, uh, uh, he liked the idea. He wrote back to me enthusiastically. He said, Don, uh, uh, you know, I'll do the whole cover for you. Uh, and not only that, but why don't we get um, the top calligraphers of the world uh, uh, each to do one of these verses? And uh, uh, now Herman had, had worked uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the 40s at the time of the 500th anniversary of Gutenberg's uh, press. He had been the main organizer of a project called Liber Librorum, which, is, uh, which, which was to get uh, the best printers from all over the world uh, to, to print um, uh, two, two, three, four pages of a, of a Bible the way they would do it in uh, 1948 or whatever it was, seven or whatever the, the year was, uh, um, using their, you know, in order to see what was Gutenberg's invention 500 years later. And, uh, and, and, and collected uh, uh, several dozen of these, um, uh, of these examples of, uh, of, of newly designed Bible, not, not full Bibles, but just uh, each, each printer would decide what part of the Bible to print, but just to, uh, 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 but anyway, it was, it's a wonderful uh, 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 collection of things, and uh, uh, it's now very prized by book collectors. I think they made 200 sets of these things, and when, you, when I first saw the thing, I, it almost made me cry because it was so much more beautiful than, than what I than what I could see uh, by by ordinary uh, uh, you know getting from my uh, the printers of my books, for example. Uh, my my editor is sitting here in the uh, um, no, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, it was uh, it, it it was really it was really great to have this this Liber Librorum problem. So now he's thinking of kind of a scriptor scriptorum pro project where he also would, would have a similar thing where he'd get. Uh, calligraphers from all over the world, each one to do a uh, uh, one one verse of, uh, of the Bible, uh, and he uh, what, he knew uh, everybody uh, and uh, essentially and uh, and and uh, I could drop his name, and so so uh, we could write a letter of invitation to the people who were the leading calligraphers in each country, um, and and say uh, here's a verse, uh, uh, would you uh, uh, would you render this for for this book that's coming out, and Herman did uh, the, the the John 3:16 verse, and we printed it up and sent that out as an example of one of the things that would be in the book, so that the, so that they could uh, 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 they could get some idea of what we had in mind. Um, so this artwork um, was was being uh, so, so so when I was living in Boston uh, in 85, 86, uh, we wrote these letters, and just about Christmas time the artwork started coming in. And it was, boy, like having Christmas presents every day, uh, the, the wonderful uh, 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 th things that the people were doing. And afterwards, um, uh, the, uh, the art was, uh, um, uh, was uh, we realized that the, uh, the artwork that we received was, was uh, uh, so inspiring that uh, you couldn't just keep it to ourselves. There's no way to, to actually uh, 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 print in a book uh, in a way that's as good as the as as uh, looking at at the vibrance of a real original piece of art, and so we so we mounted the uh, uh, the works and put them into a show that traveled around the world, 
Um, it, w it went to Europe several times. It, uh, uh, it, it went to Canada several times. The, the highlight of it was uh, uh, where it spent uh, uh, a month and a half at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. And um, uh, th there were about 35 different places where the where the works travel, and now they're, the collection is at the San Francisco Public Library. Um, and um, uh, I want to show you some of the things from this exhibit. Uh, you won't be able to see them in the slides as, as well as if you could see, see the original, uh, but I do have a, a, an original here uh, of, the, uh, of the new translation of John 3.16, which I'd like you to, to, to take a look at as you walk out after the afterwards so that you can see uh, 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 you know, an, an example of, how, uh, of, of what it can be like, when, uh, the real one. And then you can compare it with, uh, with the computer printout, which is downloadable from the web, which is it's okay, but, not, but it's really no comparison. Um, now, <clears throat> okay, but I've got to, got to move on. So um, the, uh, uh, the, the artists were told that we were that we were making this uh, calligraphy for use in a book, and so they wouldn't have to uh, actually make it. Uh, so, so they didn't actually make their artwork uh, with the idea that it would be shown, but we asked for permission afterward. Um, and uh, here's one of the examples. I'll try to see if I can fix the focus and learn how to work this. This goes, oh, OK. All right. So the uh, artist here is, is Erke Ruhinen from Finland. Uh, Who's, who I think is the leading, uh, certainly the leading calligrapher designer in, in, in Finland, I think now, and uh, he uh, and and so uh, he had a, uh, this particular presentation, and then uh, uh, I, I would uh, take his work and convert it so that I could put it into the book. He, he uh, using his directions, he wanted the, uh, he wanted a different color for you know for the word God at the bottom and so on. Um, and you have to remember, as you look at all of these examples, that I, I just gave him a, 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 a sentence of words that didn't look like much. And he found a way to make it uh, 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 somehow impressive. In fact, it, the, what happened was, is that uh, as I got the artwork in and started looking at, you know, I, I would have these, these things in front of me as I'm writing the chapters, the, the text to go with them. And, uh, and uh, it, it had a it had a great effect on on the way I understood them. Uh, somehow the uh, uh, well, you, you you have to experience it, I guess, to uh, to understand. Uh, uh, but here is me at the Macintosh. I was working at this time um, uh, uh, to edit everything into digital form. Um, in, in when I did this, actually, very few books were printed with. Uh, uh, with this kind of technology, although now uh, almost all of uh, all of them are done that way, but it was it was pretty clear uh, that I mean computers were very slow. It took it, it would take uh, um, in, in order it, in order to send uh, four megabytes uh, uh, to the print to to the uh, to the to the linotronic machine. It, it might take 15 minutes, and, and uh, you know it was it was definitely. Uh, uh, you, uh, much worse than all the commercial methods for printing at that time as far as expense and time and everything were concerned with with one big difference and that is that a person who uh, uh, who is willing to um, uh, you, you know uh, to, to put a little love into a book uh, it was for me it was it was just a ma matter of, uh, of putting four or five hours into into uh, into each illustration um, it was only four or five hours I spent a lot more time writing the chapters than that, you know. So this was a, this was a small percentage for me. But if I'm going to a to a, to a studio and paying somebody by the hour for for the for the time on the machine, it, it's a, it, quite a different proposition in those days. Um, and uh, and I did this work at Adobe Systems. Uh, in fact, uh, it was uh, one of the gr great things of serendipity. I I called up John Warnock. Um, just uh, I don't know. I got his name out of the phone book or something, and I called up uh, Adobe. I asked for John Warnock, and he answered the phone. And and uh, and I said, John, I got this book that I'm thinking about, and I need to have some, you know, some some uh, the best software for for doing some very, very beautiful illustrations. And he said, Oh yeah, we got just the stuff for you. I, I tried calling him several times afterwards, and never worked. But uh, but but for some reason, he was there that day, and he and he gave me the permission to come there, and and so for 
about three months, I was, uh, I was the night watchman at Adobe. Um, uh, I, I had a room full of about 50 Macintosh computers, that, and most people had gone home for the night. And uh, so I could, I could uh, uh, you know, the, the computers weren't that fast, uh, but, if I, but, but if I could set about 10 of them going, it was something like playing, a, if you've ever seen a simultaneous chess exhibition where, the, where, where a guy you know, makes a move on one board and he goes to the next one, and so that's what I would do. I would, you know, I, I, I would start, I would start, uh, I would start the program here saying fill this and, and, and then I'm knowing that's going to take 20 minutes and I go to the next machine and I think, okay, now which one am I on this? And, uh, and so um, uh, uh, at, at this time uh, uh, there was a uh, brand new program uh, that was in pre-beta test called Photoshop uh, and, uh, and I, I was uh, one of the first guinea pigs for that and I worked with, uh, uh, with Tom, whatever, I can't think his last name, uh, who was in Ann Arbor, but he came out a couple times to California, and we, and uh, so I, so uh, we were uh, working, uh, also developing uh, these software tools at that time, um, and uh, so I would look at, at at the calligraphy and do fat bits editing uh, uh, in order to understand the processes of uh, of, of rendering it uh, as well as I could in printed form. Um, now, um, forward. Um, this is the original John 3.16 that Herman did. And uh, as I said, the, uh, uh, I have a better translation now, so, so he's, he's, he's given me the, the, the new art, uh, in the, uh, uh, which you can look at later. Um, uh, but um, uh, this was it. you can't see the color too well. The, word, the letters gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, are, are in red. Uh, there. <clears throat> now, uh, his his wife, his wife Gudrun's office also uh, has designed some very beautiful typefaces, and uh, and uh, actually Herman uh, likes to use her typefaces, and uh, and so do I. And uh, uh, she and I knew that that she that she uh, loves uh, uh, the idea of peace, and so I asked her to do this verse, which we talked about last week. Uh, 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 from se Second Thessalonians um, about peace. Um, the next example is is the one that we looked at. I, I want to show you first uh, uh, the verses we were talking about uh, last week. Uh, they're still a little fresh in mind. It, um, calligrapher here was uh, was Robert Williams. He's a black man in Chicago, uh, about 60 years old. Worked for many years for University of Chicago Press. And uh, and so uh, he had the tough job of of of, of doing Genesis 3:16, which is we which have this uh, uh, these, these uh, questions of of uh, women's liberation to to deal with, and he he, he made a a light-hearted way of of the word troubles and so on in a way to uh, uh, to to uh, lighten it up a little bit. Um, the the verse from from Habakkuk. Um, one of the examples of poetry that I gave last time. Hmm. Maybe I should ask my. Okay. Um, uh, the, 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 this is is Karl Georg Heffer from Germany, um, another one of the great great masters who who's who has a, a, a very unique style. Any calligrapher would look at this and they would know immediately that it was his his work and uh, and uh, and and his his books on on calligraphy. Uh, uh, explain uh, with ma with many examples of of this. I have to run kind of quickly through a lot of these. Uh, this is Jonah um, and um, uh, Lily Ronker from New York uh, went to the uh, uh, to the Bronx Arboretum uh, to uh, and and uh, to draw uh, one of the plants that uh, was of the same you know the same kind of plant that was uh, involved in this in in the in the Jonah story. Um, another one we saw last week was this, uh, this one, remember, about the, the fat cows of Bashan. Uh, the, the, the artist is, is Peter Frederdeus of Chicago. He's, uh, he's got a lot of, um, of typefaces uh, uh, now that, uh, that are, and I saw him at the uh, International Type Conference that was in Boston uh, a month ago. 
Many of the artists uh, were in their late 70s or, or early 80s at the time uh, because they, they spend their their life uh, uh, with with letters. And uh, the the man who did this this is Second Timothy that all scripture inspired by God is beneficial. Verse um, uh, is is David Kindersley, who is really um, the most uh, most well known for stone cutting. And uh, he also did the um, uh, the road signs in Cambridge, England, uh, but uh, and and he has had, had some some uh, advanced theories about about spacing of letters. But uh, his, but but he but most of the good uh, stone cutters in um, in England, uh, you know, the top 20 would would all have been apprenticed with him. I think it's fair to say. And uh, uh, he died a few years ago. Um, uh, uh, and and also uh, about ten of the other of, of the pe of the people whose work will will be seen um, uh, have passed away since they since they did this work. Um, but here here in this case, uh, the letters that he have are very, very typical of things that would be used in in in, in carving in stone. Um, the the verse from Nahum, your merchants outnumber the stars in the sky, grubworms stripped and off they fly. Uh, is by Gunlager Bream, he, um, and a very hardy Icelandic man, who is uh, 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 the. In fact, uh, when the the show was was reviewed by by calligraphers for calligraphy mag for, for calligraphic magazines, uh, 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 they found that this was one of the perhaps the most interesting as far as the the novelty of the uh, of the letters were concerned they, they they were studying these for for new ideas that he had in getting energy into his into his letters um, first peter is another one i talked about last week um, where i had where i had to uh, uh, decide about uh, how to translate the the, um, the the greek word conscience and uh, the artist this, this is one of my one of my favorites, of course. Uh, uh, the artist is Jose Mendoza uh, um, y Almeida, who's a um, Spaniard living in in Paris. And uh, he, and, uh, he, and I was so glad to see how my choice uh, uh, of translation, is where I said maintain goodwill instead of keep your conscience clear, made this a, a really nice uh, piece of work. Uh, the next is by Adolf Berndt of Germany, um, another man who's passed away. He was the oldest of the, all the calligraphers. Uh, throughout his life, he had done a lot of uh, uh, work of all kinds, but including many, many Bible texts. And he did this one about, uh, uh, about Peter, uh, uh, whose name is Rock. Jesus told, chose Simon and gave him a new name, Rock. And uh, he uses the symbol for Mark also uh, in, the, in the top. Uh, qu quite a different way of doing the letters from everybody else. This was done with watercolor, and I had a great time with with Photoshop uh, filling these colors in uh, with different masks and things like that. Uh, now, um, here's one that we didn't see last week, but I wanted to mention that when you deal with uh, when you deal with text, um, it's not uh, it's 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 not difficult at all to make typographic errors, and uh, in this case, the, the uh, calligrapher is Alan Wong from uh, uh, the University of Oregon, uh, and I had always liked his work. Uh, uh, I, I chose him for this verse because I, I knew that he liked to put some pictures in with his letters. So, he, uh, and uh, and and uh, this this verse says uh, he decorated the tops of the pillars with the chains, as in the inner shrine. One hundred specially crafted pomegranates were attached to each each chain, and. And I, 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 I knew he could, he could make a nice looking pomegranate for, for me. Um, and so, so, so I asked him to do this verse. Um, uh, but he didn't know uh, two things. First of all, he didn't know that, uh, that the um, pillars weren't marble pillars, but they were bronze pillars. Uh, so, so he put this nice marble veining in there, but uh, uh, that wouldn't have been you know, in, in accordance with the text. But the other thing is that he added a word um, uh, it, 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 where he says, with the chains, it really should have been with chains. 
And I tried to think, could I change my translation, you know, so that it would be okay, but it just wasn't right. It would have to, ha it should have said he decorated the tops of the pillars with chains, uh, because the chains didn't, didn't make sense. So, um, but uh, it's easy in, with Photoshop to uh, edit these things. Um, and so if you look at the, uh, at what, what came out in the book, uh, uh, you can see that uh, just, uh, I had to, I had to, move, you know, change the P a little bit so that there wouldn't be interference with the, with the width and so on. Uh, but then, of course, I checked with him and said, you know, did I, is it okay the way I did it? And, and he said, fine. But, uh, but uh, I had to do this in seven or eight uh, of, the, of, the, of the cases where uh, some, uh, uh, you know, some difference between the translation that I sent them uh, and what actually got, uh, got, got, got done. Um, now here's here was the hardest case um, um, of, of this where where there uh -huh. the artist here is Donald Jackson from England and it was he was a, it's very interesting because uh, uh, he had uh, he's the calligrapher to the the Queen um, in in England and he had he had done um, a series of uh, shows about calligraphy on BBC and uh, you know very prominent. Uh, 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 person and I and I uh, asked him to do originally the Genesis verse and he he, he said no he's not into domination can you give me another one and, um, <laughs> and so I gave him the Isaiah verse which which is uh, the women of this city are so haughty they strut around with heads held high flirting with their eyes and now here he he had a typo um, they mince along uh, I said they mince along with dainty steps jingling with their feet and he he, and uh, and uh, when I saw this, this it, his his uh, his work actually at this point he was uh, uh, he was inventing a new style of, of calligraphy done with brushes and uh, and uh, there, there were there, there were shows of this uh, of this work and he had done uh, a lot of Tolkien with with uh, with this particular style of, of lettering and um, and uh, so I I. I uh, uh, you know, thought it was it was great and so on, and I'm digitizing it. And, and in fact, it was one of the last ones that I uh, that that came in. And then I and then I'm sitting there uh, doing my fat bits editing, and all of a sudden it occurred to me and said, "What? He has the, he says on dainty steps, didn't I say with dainty steps?" Um, and sure enough, uh, you know, I I wanted this parallelism. Uh, you know, you have with heads held high, with their eyes, with dainty steps, with their feet. Now this was like, so here was a typo that I just couldn't fix, um, uh, yeah, you know, with Photoshop. There's no way to, to sneak in, you know, uh, to, uh, to sneak in the uh, uh, the letters in there without, you know, doing violence to the whole composition. Um, so how? But but you know, it's the last thing uh, uh, at the finishing the book. How am I ever going to get this fixed? And and already, you know, uh, I had to pull teeth to get this one because because uh, we had to go through two two rounds on it. So um, uh, so just as I'm uh, as I happen to be, uh, you know, uh, worrying about this, uh, I happen to notice that uh, I'm in the art department of Adobe, and on the and on the on the desk of the Mac where, where, I, where I am, there was a there was a, uh, a article about a, a graphics magazine an interview with Donald Jackson. And uh, lo and behold, here he was. Uh, it said Donald Jackson is 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 in Santa Clara this weekend, uh, <laughs> you know. And so I drove, you know. So you know. So in, six hours later, I was talking to him. It, uh, he 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 was in California, and I had explained to him the problem, and uh, and so he you know he promised to uh, uh, to do it and. Uh, um, and uh, I had to remind him a few times, but uh, uh, but but I did get uh, you know the, the the artwork where it says with dainty steps uh, uh, coming later. Um, now he also sent me uh, some some other sheets that uh, when he learned it was going to be an exhibit, he says you know a lot of people think that when you when you do calligraphy it sort of drops from heaven, uh, but you have to warm up and do all kind of studies before before the final thing happens. Uh, the, unfortunately, this is quite dark, but uh, uh, but I can focus it a little bit. But these are some of the. Uh, this is sort of a collage made of some of the papers that he that he threw that he was you know throw away as he's getting going. So he starts out you know the women, the women of this, the women of this city, 
uh, and so on, and, and, and getting you know women of this city. Are, uh, uh, so he's working on on um, uh, here, here's some upside down, some are right side up. Uh, you know, just to uh, uh, so in the show we put a few of these things so that people could study uh, what the, you know what goes on uh, behind the scenes when when artwork is uh, uh, is getting uh, created. <clears throat> um, now the next story is uh, is the hardest one for uh, for, for, for communication and also uh, where I have to make a, a, a terrible confession. Uh, but uh, this is the original artwork that I got from Russia, uh, from Krasnodar, Russia. It's I think it's near the near the Crimea, um, and um, the, and in this case, uh, uh, communication. Uh, this was you remember this is 1985. This is long before you know Gorbachev is just getting uh, started. In, in Russia, and uh, communication uh, is is very difficult, and uh, things that get sent there can mysteriously disappear in the mail, and so on. Um, uh, it's it, lots of censorship, uh, but I sent him at, uh, this uh, to this verse to to be done, and here was his uh, uh, his solution. This is the, the the passage that I talked about last week, First Timothy, this this wonderful poem in in the Greek. Uh, Christ was revealed in body, justified in spirit, witnessed by angels, proclaimed a pagan. Pagans trusted on earth, glorified in heaven, um, and um, uh, and uh, after I had sent him the uh, uh, the words to to be done, I um, I I realized that my translation wasn't optimum. Um, that uh, in fact, uh, uh, if I under a better understanding of the original Greek in this verse uh, was not to use the word acknowledge here to say we acknowledge that true religion is a great mystery, but uh, considering the context and so on, that it would have better to say we know that great, true religion is a great mystery. Um, well, fortunately, no is a subset of acknowledge. <laughs> um, and, and, and Photoshop has this, has this wonderful tool called the cloning tool, so, so, uh, so I could take my, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, let, let, me, uh, let, let me show you that uh, uh, too. Uh, th this is a, this is a letter he wrote me, uh, uh, and uh, you, know, you can't see it too well, but uh, you know Lena Frankel Krasnodar. But he, he uses a Cyrillic typewriter to write English, and <laughs> and, and, and and so in order to you know he, in order to do an N, uh, he he does two wo two ones and draws a bar by hand uh, into him, and and uh, he, you know to do a U he does does the Russian E, which is like a backwards N. And, and to get an R, he, he takes a P and draws. And so, so he, he, he finds as many Russian letters as he can, you know, and, and he, writes this, he writes me this letter. But, but it takes us six weeks uh, 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 to, to, to correspond. So I couldn't tell him, you know, change the acknowledge to no. Um, uh, but, um, uh, but then, uh, so, so I did it with Photoshop. And again, I, uh, I uh, oh, sorry, this is, yeah, so this is what I this is this is what I did, uh, and and what appears in the book, um, and uh, you see how no is is shortened there. Now these are actually the you know it's little pieces of parchment that he he, he did the the work on, then he then he tear he, he tore it in parchment and put it together, and uh, and uh, so I could I could preserve the edges of the parchment just you know uh, use use this cloning tool and make it look like a real piece of. A thing, but I also I also changed his his uh, art in another respect because I I, I was so uh, it, uh, it was important to me uh, to have this uh, uh, this Greek poem uh, rendered in English with the parallelism. So I wanted the I wanted the six parts of the poem to be uh, you know revealed in body, justified, witness, proclaimed, trusted, glorified. To have that parallelism, so I also did that editing. You see how this. Uh, uh, let's compare that with the original. Um, and here's the original. You see, I, uh, I had to move this word revealed down here and in, order to, in order to show the parallelism in the Greek. So um, now, now comes the part where I have to make my, my, my admission. And that is uh, uh, this, 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 sh this show of the, of the artwork went uh, around the world, as I said. And I... And uh, at one point, uh, it was in Canada, and um, and a TV show was was made of, of the exhibition, and uh, and the commentator went through for a half an hour and and visited the different uh, uh, the different works in the in the collection, and uh, 
and uh, and then afterwards they sent me the video of this uh, of this show. And when they got to this one, the commentator said, "And look how this uh, this man in Russia had cleverly concealed a, um, a an Orthodox cross in the in the, in the in the pattern." And so, if you know uh, about Orthodox cross, there's always this thing that's sort of at an angle at the bottom of the cross, uh, where, you know, sort of like I don't know where Christ stepped off the cross or something. Um, and and so you're here in the background between the letters, he has this idea of a cross with you know the double bars is a part of it, and this also this this diagonal is part of the thing. So completely unaware of this, and and um, I had destroyed it. Um, <laughs> thing. Okay. And and I couldn't you know I couldn't check with him because there's no way to communicate. So so uh, I have this now on the web which you can download. And uh, if we you know if if we uh, uh, can s sell enough co copies to to make a third printing, then it'll be okay in the third printing. But the, but this artwork at least I, uh, this has the this has the, the the original cross and the parallelism and so on. And I hope that this, this is okay. But it, anyway, uh, I, as I said, I have. This is where I this is where I blew it. Um, uh, another one that I like very much is from Hungary. This Edith Zigani did Second Corinthians. When a person turns to the Lord, the heavy veil is removed, and the colors and the way the Lord got in here is just great. Um, uh, Houston Ankers from Sweden is the lady who for many years uh, was the calligrapher of Nobel Prizes. If you got a Nobel Prize, you would, your certificate, she would be the one who did it. And, and she wrote to me that when, when she got this, ver this request to do the verse, that she was feeling down. And this particular verse uh, was just what she needed uh, in, in, in her life. Uh, um, and, uh, and we found, and, and, and five years later, uh, uh, my wife and I, um, uh, we're visiting in Sweden. We went to a mathematics institute, and and uh, so we we uh, called her up and said, "Can we, you know, I'd like to meet you?" And we went out to vi to see her in her studio on one of the islands east of Stockholm. And and uh, to my surprise, she had made two copies of this: one for herself, and she's had it in her studio uh, uh, where, where she works. Uh, so she really uh, uh, found uh, um, uh, some uplift from this. Uh, uh, this one is from. Uh, uh, Czech Republic, um, I think actually now it'd be Slovakia. I, no, I'm sorry. So it was Czechoslovakia at the time. But, uh, and, uh, and Lubomir Krotky um, uh, did a very clever thing here. Uh, this is where St. Paul is, is writing between the lines. Uh, uh, St. Paul is doing a very uh, 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 rabbinical thing of, of of, of, of talking about a, a passage in this Galatians 3.16. He said, notice that the promises were addressed to Abraham and to his offspring. And then sort of in parenthesis, the passage does not say, and to offsprings in the plural. It uses the singular, and to your offspring, meaning Christ. Um, and so the way, he, uh, uh, the way he decided to do this was to, to, to actually write between the lines uh, with, the red, uh, with the red letters. And uh, well, I had a lot of fun actually trying to, uh, uh, you know, having to go through uh, and reconstruct the, where, where the where the things come come together. You, uh, the uh, automatic tools for uh, for color separation don't exist. Um, <clears throat> uh, Judges 3:16 is an interesting passage that has to do with left-handedness, um, and so I got a left-handed calligrapher to do this one. Um, this is um, where my name is Robert Borgia, um, and I, I, I had specifically, you know, saying who's the best left-handed calligrapher in town. He's the, he was the uh, president of the Calligrapher Society in Chicago. Um, in the book, uh, so, so he has this, his mirror image, the left half. Ehud made himself a short double-edged sword and strapped it onto his right thigh underneath his clothes. And the fact that it's on his right thigh where he can reach it with his left hand is an important thing in this story. Uh, now he, he did this calligraphy as if it's a mirror image between the left and the right, uh, but it's actually, um, and, and he said he always writes uh, uh, in, in mirror image when he's teaching a class. Um, and, uh, and so it's actually not just a, a mirror I mean, he, it's, he actually did the letters uh, individually. Um, 
And then uh, in, in the book, uh, uh, we gray out the, uh, the left half. But the, the idea is to somehow is to in indicate this idea of, of, of leftness and, uh, as, being, as, being part of the, uh, um, as being part of the story. Uh, Tim Gervin did this verse, which is um, uh, uh, Micah. And uh, Tim is, the, is a very famous designer in Seattle who, like, he did the Banana Republic logo and things like that. And uh, he's got, the, this, is, this is a famous uh, verse that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. used in his, in his uh, uh, Nobel Prize uh, speech. People will dwell in the shade of their own grapevines and their own fig trees. Nobody will make them afraid. For God Almighty has made this decree. And he had this nice tenderly um, uh, rendition of that famous verse. Um, another favorite is from Revelation 3.16, the designer here. Uh, Rick Kuzik is, uh, is uh, chief designer of Hallmark Cards, and he is also the main editor of the, of the, of the, of the main calligraphy magazines in America. Now, uh, here the, the verse is, uh, um, since you are, let's see if I can focus it again, since you are merely lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And, uh, and, and you have all this, this dark red uh, uh, associated with it. And he, he wrote an interesting le letter back. We had told him that uh, you know, we wanted to use a, a general color palette in this book uh, where, we would have, uh, uh, where we'd have solid colors instead of, uh, instead of the, uh, the normal four color process. But we would have a, we have a nice, uh, uh, you know, besides black, we'd also have a nice red and nice blue green and a sort of a parchment color. Um, and, uh, and he said he started out trying to use all those colors. And then, but then finally, this, the solution hit him just to do it you know, in one color, one solid thing, but with this idea of the spit uh, uh, coming through. Uh, it, um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, I think, a tremendously good solution. And, uh, and uh, uh, this is... Uh, 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 kind of a climactic verse in the 316 project, actually, to find out to to uh, uh, it, it talks about uh, the, the idea of that apathy and lukewarmness is worse than uh, than being uh, uh, cold or hot than the extreme. Um, <clears throat> now, um, one of the strangest things episodes occurred with uh, uh, the man from Poland, Andrei Kot. Um, uh, and uh, uh, it was quite mysterious. We wrote to him the, the letter, and a few months later, uh, we received a package from Poland, um, and it was a big package, and it was just full of all kind of book plates. Uh, and there would be 10 copies of, of each of about uh, 30 book plates. And we looked at them, you know, very interesting. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, what is this? And uh, no letter, no, nothing else. It's just a, this, this thing full of... Now, you have to remember, this is, this is a time when Poland is, uh, is, is uh, also... There's a lot of censorship and solidarity is, is getting going and so on in 1985. Um, and um, people's letters are all being read if they come from, a, from abroad. And, and anyway, uh, uh, he sent us this thing, big package full of all kind of book plates. Um, uh, two weeks later, we got another package. And... Uh, this time, uh, some more book plates and a few other we wedding invitations and other graphics that, uh, that he had done. Very interesting, uh, great style. Uh, and so, you know, m my wife made a nice little booklet out of these uh, uh, that we could do. Uh, another package come a few weeks later after that. And uh, this time, what do you know? Uh, uh, five solutions to this verse that I had asked him for. Um, uh, Elisha declared, here is what God says Pools of water will fill this dry riverbed. Uh, this is um, the, let's see, it's 2 Kings 3.16. And so here he has, uh, uh, you know, all the letters in this fanciful fish. And he, he, sent, uh, he sent several of them. Uh, the one I liked best was this one. Um, but unfortunately, it had a typo in it. Uh, uh, he, he left out one of the words. Elisha declared, here is what God says. Pools of water will this dry riverbed. Um, I, I couldn't stick Phil in there anyway. Uh, so I couldn't use this one. And the, and the one we actually used it, uh, is, um, 
is, is this, a, a, a third version. Um, and uh, uh, these are huge. The, uh, I mean, this is almost, uh, no, actually, I guess it was about uh, uh, three, three feet wide. Um, and um, there's something about, the, about his style. Uh, when, when, when Newsweek magazine did an article about the 316 book, this was the, this was the illustration that they chose to illustrate uh, uh, from it. And also, uh, uh, I think it was Stern in Germany chose the same one of all the, uh, of all the ones. Um, uh, then uh, then uh, uh, we still didn't, apparently didn't have any letter from him you know, to understand what it was, but I, but I, sent, uh, I sent the check that for the, uh, you know, we, that I promised to, uh, to pay all the calligraphers, and, and I got, uh, he, his signature is, is interesting, it has a little cat, his name is Cot, and it has a little cat in it, and uh, we got the canceled check, and it had this signature on it, and so on, but uh, still, far they knew, hadn't heard from him. Well, then when we make the uh, art exhibit uh, several years later, I'm going through all of these uh, uh, things that we had in the boxes from, from these days. And, um, uh, uh, you know, because he, um, I, I, I was now looking once again at the ones that we decided not to use in the book. And there was a piece of paper in there that looked like it had, a, you know, a lot of pencil scratchings on it. Maybe he's sharpening his pencil, getting, getting, getting warmed up or so on. But when I looked at it a little more, I said, well, maybe these are words, um, you know, in Polish. And so uh, we had a Polish visitor from the computer science department, and I showed it to him. And sure enough, this was a letter uh, that he had, he, had sent, uh, he had sent me three or four years ago. And he'd say, uh, uh, you know, I, I, need, um, uh, um, I need pens. I need chocolate. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, and so, uh, uh, and so quickly we sent a care package out, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and apologized for not, un not realizing that, you know, but it was, it was a very curious uh, correspondence, um, <laughs> uh, suffice it to say. Now, um, the, the calligrapher of 1 John 3.16, uh, this is, it is Jeannie Wong uh, of New York City. She's uh, um, uh, uh, also in her late 70s now. Um, uh, she, uh, I, I, I remember her for many other uh, uh, works that I had seen, but, uh, for example, if any of you have this... Uh, this nine-volume set of history of Will Durant and, and, and Ariel Durant. Uh, she's, she does the covers of, of, of those books, for example. Um, uh, Michael Harv... What happened? What's going on? Uh-oh. Have we lost the ball? There's a jam? Okay. I'll let her, what? Yeah, well, I, I, I tried to go backwards. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Hello? Can you, hope you can fix it. Uh, uh, the, the next one that, that I have is, is by Michael Harvey of England. Uh, oh, there's the... Michael Harvey is another man that, that's, a, that's a prominent type designer, and, uh, and so I am. Did you start by scanning in the actual artwork? Yes, I, I had a, a scanner. The scanners weren't very good in those days, but, uh, but I had a Microtech scanner, uh, which had some bugs in it, and I would have to edit those bugs out. Uh, if I had a large piece of art, I had to scan it in two sections and, 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 uh, and, 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 put, and paste them together. Um, but uh, but then I would uh, uh, but but for for the calligraphy um, most of the time I would try to I, I would try to make it line art which meant uh, 600 dots per inch say and uh, and, uh, and and solid uh, so I had to convert you know not half toning um, and uh, and it was very delicate uh, to to make it so that uh, 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 the joints between strokes uh, wouldn't wouldn't fill up. So, so I had to do a lot of editing to, to open the open the joints up, especially on the. 
I, I, I worked uh, with, I had a whole bunch of uh, interesting mathematical transformations with Photoshop, but also a lot of handwork, like those tendrils on that grapevine. Uh, lots and lots of work on that because uh, I, I, I couldn't do it. What, where are you guys? We can use the very one point to show us what the next one. Okay, that's all right. Oh, well, this is, this is Michael Harvey's uh, uh, Ezekiel, seven days came to an end, then Jehovah's word came to me. Uh, his, I, I just wanted to, he, he, he has a font now that, of these letters. There's no one else, uh, uh, this, this style is uniquely his, and I, and I like it very much. Um, whoa, okay, now, what next? Now the, ne now the next one is, uh, was the hardest one of all to do. Uh, Derek Pao in Hong Kong sent me uh, he, has, he had this way of, of, of taking calligraphy and somehow getting it into so it, it making handmade paper and embossing it on handmade paper, and then he would he would uh, uh, shine a light, a, a, a raking light, so that you could see the image, and uh, very, very interesting effect. But I couldn't. Uh, uh, but at first, I, I couldn't pick it up uh, uh, from the slide that he sent me, so I asked him to send me the original the original artwork, the paper. And uh, meanwhile, I'd noticed that when I'm using the scanner, uh, the scanner was picking up uh, uh, things that I couldn't see on the artwork, uh, like snowpake, you know, white out. Uh, uh, if, if, if uh, you know, art, artists weren't, weren't forbidden from using white out on this because it's for publication. And, uh, but when you look at it through a scanner, uh, where they put a little bit of white out, it would look like a mountain. Uh, uh, you know, and you'd see you'd see uh, shadows and things like that. Uh, so when I what it turned out with this with with this image where the where the embossing was was actually the way that the, that that was done, um, uh, it, it dawned on me I could I could just put it in the scanner and the scanner would would would, would be this raking sideways light that would pick up the uh, the the uh, three dimensional aspect of it perfectly. And so that in fact is what happened. And um, but I. I uh, but this was my first proof back from the printer, and there wasn't enough contrast doing it in this color, so I used, uh, so I changed to red then, um, and that that worked out fine. I had to, I had to, uh, uh, I had to uh, actually go with the mouse though, and and do all the letters uh, uh, by hand to in order to uh, in order to do this. Um, <clears throat> so he was from Hong Kong, Stephen Skaggs. Uh, did this uh, this interesting thing you can't see too well, but uh, it it says orgies with new with old wine and new wine are making my people lose their wits, and he had this nice way of taking this the letters for orgies and in different colors and and and, and mirror image uh, uh, reversing them up and down and make it into a, a kind of a you know the smoke uh, 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 in a uh, in, in a party and so on and. Uh, and uh, so another another great solution. Um, the, uh, um, the the artist for for Joel 316 was Friedrich Peter of uh, Vancouver, B.C. at uh, St. Regent's College, and he uh, and he uh, f felt that this particular verse was so powerful that he couldn't do justice to it, and he kept sending me more. Uh, solutions to it. Uh, uh, I had already digitized it and made it for the book, but I, I would get more things from him saying, I, you know, I got to try it again. Uh, and um, uh, it says, on that day, God will roar from Mount Zion, uh, and and uh, so on. And he and I'll show you three of the of the solutions that came in after I had already uh, done one for the book, and we put these in into the show. On this day, God will roar from Mount Zion. His voice will thunder from Jerusalem. Um, the, um, the heavens and the earth will tremble and quake, but God will be a shelter for his people, a mighty fortress for the Israelites. And he did, an, and, and uh, it, I, I, I show this, uh, here's another uh, one that he did, and I show this, uh, the, these versions, because it was an interesting thing in the show, um, uh, w the, um, there was a strong, there were strong preferences between different people seeing the show. For example, I said the you know the Newsweek and a lot of people loved uh, the solution of Cot, um, and uh, others would you know go for Hermann Zopf and so on. Uh, but uh, uh, a lot of my German friends were mostly uh, fascinated by the Sturm und Drang in this 
you know, so they would say, this is wunderbar, you know, and, uh, on, on these. And uh, so uh, just to, to uh, uh, you know, it's well known that, uh, that there are many different standards for, for beauty. Um, now, for, to my own taste, uh, uh, this is mo this is uh, uh, this is more for me. Uh, the, the artist here uh, is is in uh, in Puerto Rico. Uh, is, is interesting. He's a he's a prominent banker in in Puerto Rico, and and in his fifties, he asked to be apprenticed to master calligraphers. He loved calligraphy, and he became a master calligrapher himself. And uh, he died a few years after after doing this, uh, but it's it was done on very delicate red paper and very miniature. And anyway, it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of work. Uh, Claude Dietrich, uh, a Frenchman, was living in Peru when I when I uh, requested him to do this. He has uh, this about the Ark of the Covenant, uh, uh, Jeremiah three sixteen, um, and uh, none of, actually this is one of my absolute favorites in the book. Uh, I have to I have to move fast here. The uh, uh, the man who I who uh, if anyone uh, is more famous as a calligrapher than Hermann Zopf, it would be Fr Friedrich Neugebauer in Austria, and uh, this is a absolutely masterful. There's absolutely no whiteout on this, and and it's it's uh, he has a he had uh, 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 in in every way uh, uh, the the form of this is uh, is is incredibly good, and his style again unique to. Uh, uh, in his in his books, um, uh, it was uh, the greatest satisfaction to me to learn that after the book was published, uh, he asked for a copy of unbound uh, signatures, and he took them and mounted them. Uh, he mounted all of the all of the art from all of the things and, and set it up as a show and and uh, and exhibited it uh, several places in Austria. So uh, that was some. Uh, uh, you know that that's uh, that that's a master like that would would not think that I ruined it with my computer editing uh, was uh, was a great uh, a, a great news for me. Um, Jean Evans of Cambridge, uh, she lives she, uh, she lives off of Harvard Square. Um, uh, did did um, uh, Second Peter three sixteen and it's a it's a, it's an interesting passage. Paul says this in all of his letters whenever he refers to these things. Some of his writing is hard to understand. Ignorant and insecure people distort his words just as they twist the rest of the scriptures and they destroy themselves in the process. Uh, so here, since they're talking about Paul writing being hard to understand, she used a crypto cryptographic technique, you know, of, uh, where you have to sort of figure out, puzzle out what the letters are uh, as, you, as you go. Uh, so they, okay, now um, um, uh, Tim Botts uh, is one of the great calligraphers of Bible verses and has, has many books about, uh, about his favorite uh, verses of calligraphy. And I uh, asked him to do Luke 3.16. John told everybody, I am baptizing you with water, but someone more powerful is coming. I'm not even fit to untie his shoes. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, um, uh, the interesting thing here is the translation that where, I, where, where it says a Holy Spirit and not, m most translations say the Holy Spirit. Um, and, uh, and I, I went with, uh, with a minority view there because Luke in his Greek did not say the Holy Spirit but said a Holy Spirit. And so um, uh, there's a little story here that this, uh, uh, this was the verse that was chosen by Lutheran magazine for the cover of its of of its uh, of one of its issues of, a few years ago, and uh, and uh, uh, um, and uh, somebody wrote a letter to the editor after saying, you know, the devil has gotten into the in, into Lutheran magazine because it, he's denying the Holy Spirit, he's denying the Trinity because this translation doesn't say the Holy Spirit like my Bible says, it says a Holy Spirit. Um, well, it's it, it's interesting that uh, one day I was I was walking in the hall at Stanford and I and my secretary calls out the door to me and says, Don, uh, uh, who, you know, what translation did you use in your book? And I said, Oh, it's my own translation. And so she, you know, and so she tells the person on the phone, Yeah, he did his own translation. And and <laughs> well, it turned out it was the editor of this magazine. Um, uh, and and uh, but it was great. The editor had a response in there saying, You know, well. You know, uh, this, if you look in the original Greek, this is the, 
uh, this is this is the way it is, you know, and and you'll find a, a, a reputable Bible scholars do, do, doing this translation. But it was it. Uh, but anyway, that, there it is. Um, so uh, uh, now Ismar David uh, did Leviticus 3:16, and and he is. Uh, uh, another person uh, in his 80s uh, spent his life on uh, uh, doing beautiful biblical text. Uh, several of his books on Hebrew calligraphy are, are available. He, he, he's probably in America the the, the most well-known uh, 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 calligrapher in Hebrew. This is the priest shall burn the pieces on the altar. He has it in in Hebrew as and in English, uh, using a a kind of an old style of of Hebrew. Um, <clears throat> Now, I'm getting near the end, but I have to tell you this wonderful story from the man in Bombay. Um, uh, the a, a calligrapher named Satyanarayanan Malaya Wadashurla in Bombay is, uh, is an absolutely brilliant uh, person, works for the Bombay Times, and uh, lives in uh, uh, some kind of a commune there. And I asked him to do 2 Samuel 3.16. He, he, he had never seen anything about the Bible before, but he was enthusiastic about this, this project because he was a great admirer of Herman Zob. And he sent me back 10 solutions to the, um, uh, and I had to choose only one. And I, I, I could have very happily chosen at least three of them. Uh, the, this is one that he did. Uh, well, it's about a very touching story that's not well known at all in the, in the Bible. Uh, I hadn't known about it before I worked on the book. Michal's husband walked behind her sobbing as far as Bahurim. Then Abner ordered him to go back, so he went back. And there's, this, there's a little story about, uh, about Paltiel and, and Michal and, uh, in, in, this, um, in, in this part of having to do with King David stealing uh, the, the wife away from this man. And... Um, uh, this particular example was actually done with with grains of sand. Um, uh, it, this is real sand that he had, he, he, he put paste on there and got the letters to be in sand for for, for this one. Uh, the next one, uh, Michal's husband walked behind her sobbing. You see, in the, in the beautiful brush lettering. Here's one where he used actual tears. He he, he took watercolor and then he took his own tears. And, and, and to make this sobbing uh, effect. Um, another one, with, 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 with you know, the, the colors of letters, Michal's husband walked behind her sobbing as far as Mahurim. You see the teardrop coming out of the eye, so he went back. Um, and and the, uh, which one would you choose? So, so the one that I chose is this one. Uh, uh, and and uh, again, another another great uh, but this is the, the reason I chose this is because these letters are are distinctively Indian uh, for, from from India there's there's a certain there's a feeling that you couldn't find anywhere else in the world uh, coming out here besides the uh, uh, the other beauty of it so I, I had ten of them I'm showing you five of his of, of his solutions to this to this verse um, and the, the last one is my absolute favorite uh, Ju uh, Julian Waters who's the the um, art director for National Geographic uh, did First Samuel 3:16, and, and uh, uh, Eli called him, saying, "Samuel, my son," and he answered, "Here I am." Uh, you have to know the story to realize how, how great this is, because Samuel is sort of very timidly saying, "Here I am," because uh, uh, of the story, which you, which I can't go into now. But so the, so he it's captured just perfectly with the weights here and, and I'm sitting there on the computer digitizing these letters I just I, I, they, they even look good uh, you know at, at 100 times res, uh, size it was just uh, it was just a treat to work with that so um, that's the um, uh, that's the last slide um, so the text the, the title of my book is the Bible text illuminated this word illumination is uh, has a double meaning. Uh, you, you know the word. Uh, uh, manuscripts are are said to be illuminated uh, by, by the monks, and and uh, also we wanted to you know shine the light on them and, and understand what people have said about these verses. Uh, 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 to me, however, this illumination was really you know extra 
extrasensory perception comes through here. Um, uh, Walt Whitman, when he was speaking to artists in 1851, said to the artist has been given the command to go forth into all the world and preach the gospel of beauty. Um, in these slides I showed you, uh, I showed you uh, calligraphers working with the Bible. I think, uh, I think most of you know that in, in other uh, religions, calligraphy is, is even more uh, uh, associated in, in China and Japan. Uh, there's in, intimately connect, the, the calligraphy is intimately connected with the religious experience. Um, and right now at Harvard, at the Sackler Gallery, there's a great exhibit of Islamic calligraphy. Um, and uh, I have the catalog here. Um, and it said in here, it mentions an Islamic maxim. It says, calligraphy gives greater clarity to truth. Uh, and, and, they, and the t title of the, of the catalog that they chose from another Arabic metaphor says, calligraphy is music for the eyes. Okay, so, so um, I, excuse me, this is, this is at the Sackler, yeah, um, and it, it, was, it was mounted originally at the, at the Metropolitan in, in New York and then went to Los Angeles and so on. Um, yeah, um, so I just want to summarize by saying that uh, many people's most deeply felt religious experiences are connected with music and or fine art, and I think that in the future, um, no doubt mystical experiences will be associated also with computer-generated videos. And uh, not only my religious mystical things, but also uh, great expositions of science. Uh, uh, technology will also be done with, uh, with the, the assistance of, of, uh, of, of art. Uh, somehow I'm thinking that these experiences transcend science and uh, I hope that, uh, that these examples uh, uh, illustrate why I think that. Okay, I'm, I, I took a little longer today, but I still do have time for questions. As usual, Don, you overwhelm us. You, you have a question, Doug? Yes, that's a comment. Okay. It speaks for itself. Thank you. Yes? Okay, so so he's saying that art and art and craft, you can see how they communicate um, beauty uh, and emotion, but it's hard for you to see that how a computer program can communicate an emotion. Um, I I that's right. I, I I don't write. I can't write a computer program. Prob well, I, I might be able to animate something. I don't know, but uh, but that would no. I, what I'm thinking about the beauty in in programming when I talked about that is. Is more of a is more of the way you would think of it in, in, in literature, where you see where, where you see something that fits that that really clicks uh, because it's so so elegantly stated or something like that, uh, and it's sort of music to your. I, I I can remember when I when I was a college student, I, I I was learning about compilers by reading code, and there was a and you know or, or um, assembly programs, and there was a program that I got from IBM called Soap, written by Stan Poley. And uh, it was absolutely beautiful to, 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 to me to read it. It was just like uh, hearing a symphony when I would read this code, because every instruction was sort of doing two things, and it was all, it was all coming, coming together. Uh, I also read the code of, the, uh, of, a, of a compiler that was written uh, um, by Alan Perlis, actually. And it was just, it was just like bl plotting, and it was just like you know, it, it, uh, it was it was uh, it was excruciating to tr to read it because it just didn't have any any wit to it whatsoever. Um, uh, you know, um, it was you know it got the job done, but uh, it was disappointing. It, uh, and and I, I was encouraged to rewrite that program in a way that would that would have the style of uh, of the uh, of Stan Poley, uh, and so that's how I got into software. But, but uh, in fact, uh, I, I, you know, it's very subjective, of co obviously, but, uh, 
but I, I do think that, uh, that, that there are issues of style that, that, that come through and make something a, a, a pleasure to read, but, I, but, it, but it not necessarily that it will give me a transcendental uh, emotion. I, I don't know. I mean, it was just, you know, it would put something in one register and then move it into another, you know. I mean, it was, it was just, uh, it, it just uh, uh, was very brute force. It, uh, uh, well, we, you know, it would, it, would, it, would, it would do in 12 instructions what you should have done in three. Uh, uh, yes? Yeah, uh, d d right, um, designing a typeface is an interesting case uh, where, where you know, uh, um, I like to people like to talk about proving programs correct, and and uh, and a lot of programs you can you can uh, use formal methods to to say their correctness, but when it comes to these programs that I r wrote for for letter forms, uh, I, there was no way that I could prove that this was going to be a beautiful A. You know, it was just, I would just have to try it and, and, and hope, hope that, uh, if, you know, the next day I do it with other parameters, it wouldn't turn out to be ugly. Um, uh, there, you have, I have no rational way to, to formally say what, what A-ness was. Um, but I, I, I uh, you have to, exp you have to know how to spell the word A-ness. A <laughs> um, <coughs> um, that, you know, you know, Doug Hofstetter said that the, the, um, the, the key problem, the first problem in artificial intelligence is, is what is the letter A? And, and my response was the second, the second big question in AI is what is the letter I? <coughs> um, uh, AI, you don't get it. Well, uh, um, <laughs> um, but um, uh, so as I'm, right, as I'm doing these, these, uh, uh, these, uh, these letters, I, was, I started out thinking it would be easy and it turned out that it, w it was five years before I got anything that satisfied me. And, uh, and the first book that, I, that came out uh, was a great disappointment to me after I saw it uh, uh, in, in print. I, 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 my, I mean, I, I, I burned with disappointment. I actually felt so hot flash when I saw it, and I think, oh, no, it just doesn't. I, I, I opened the book expecting to be really happy with it, and oh, I spent, you know, after I had put so much time into it, uh, back to the drawing boards, uh, uh, st still work uh, in until I could, uh, in until I could tune it up again. Uh, so there's a, there's a lots of, uh, of things going with this. Uh, when you design something yourself, you're overly sensitive to it. You can't, uh, you can't view it dispassionately. Um, uh, if I see someone's used my fonts, I can't think, you know, during a lecture, I can't concentrate on the lecture. I, I keep thinking, shouldn't I have changed the letter S a little bit? <laughs> um, uh, uh, but um, uh, uh, but uh, I'm sure all artists go through this, and uh, 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 it's because, uh, uh, because the more subjective it is, the harder... Uh, the harder it is to know that you've got quality. Same with, stu in some ways, with the student uh, uh, thesis. If we had a theoretical thesis where somebody could prove something correct, uh, they could finish it a year earlier, and we wouldn't have to convince the student that they'd graduated. But if somebody does a, a good piece of design, uh, we, uh, they always think, well, you know, how do I know it's, it's, it's right? And it takes another year before we can build up their confidence and say, you've done it. Yes? It's a solution in a sense that uh, I, I, I present them with the problem, saying, uh, if, if you had seen the text, uh, uh, you know, just unformatted text of these words, it just looks like blah, 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 blah. And, and they, they looked at that, and they, and, and they made it into something uh, spectacular that, that sort of is, is moving. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I had this, uh, uh, this poster in my office, uh, and I keep looking at it for, for, for almost 10 years now, uh, since I since it was printed and I'm not tired of it yet, you know. So so in that sense, it was a solution to their design, to the challenge that we gave them. <laughs> that would. And, and I, it's not the word I think that I would. No. Heard. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well. That's true, but but they but it was a commission that they that they that they were given um, with with uh, with Tim Botts his his other books. Uh, 
I like doorposts is one of his books. Uh, he he starts out and and he says, let me let me choose my own verse and I'm going to uh, you know take my favorite ones and I'm going to to show exactly what it what it feels like to me. Uh, but in this case, I gave him one, and you know it's like taking a required course at uh, you know in college. You know it's it's different. Um, uh, it, it, it's a little different from, uh, from that perspective. So, so I, I think uh, when when it when it came out, uh, it actually looked like uh, it, it it could have looked like it was their favorite verse. But you know, uh, uh, in 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 reality, these most of these were not uh, famous verses. They were they they were they were ordinary verses. We were shining a light on them, trying to illuminate them, but they made them they made them great. <laughs> So yeah. Behind you there? No. Here. Um, you, have, you keep saying like sort of just subjective. Do you feel like you know the beauty is really just a subjective notion, or have you up based on objective reality? I don't know how to write a computer program to, that will say something is beautiful or not, but I know what's when something affects me and when it doesn't. I mean, so you know it. it uh, um, uh, it, there's this, you know, saying it's clever, but is it art? You know, <laughs> but somehow, sometimes I know that uh, uh, that to me something is art. Uh, but but uh, don't ask me to give you an algorithm for it. Um. Oh, uh oh. Yes, I have actually. I have a, uh, something to say though before we quit, and that is some homework for next time. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I I put on the web. Um, uh, a, a wonderful uh, short story by Raymond Smullyan. And so if you got to get to my home page and then go to Smullyan, S-M-U-L-L-Y-A-N dot H-T-M-L, uh, and you can look at this story called Planet Without Laughter. It's a, it's a marvelous parable on many levels about uh, limits of rationality. Uh, you can read it uh, as a you know, to, to get insights about about religion, all religions, uh, the question of form over substance in religion. You could even read it as a metaphor about the drug culture or many other ways. But in any case, uh, I think you'll find it thought-provoking. And and if you if you read this, you'll be able to understand uh, a few of the points that I make in the other lectures. Um, I I didn't put any links to it anywhere else because I'm still waiting for official permission from the publisher. Uh, but uh, I think that I've that I've been fair in asking for the the right permissions, and I and uh, it's now it is now on the on the web there. Um, so that's my announcement, and uh, I remind you as you leave, you uh, uh, encourage you to take a look at the uh, at the original artwork here, and also this, you can look at this catalog of the Islamic um, art. Thank you very much. <coughs>